The next part of the cranial nerve examination is a combination of the third, fourth, and sixth cranial nerves. The third is the ocular motor, the fourth is the trochlear, and the sixth is the abducens. Now, that they're taken together because they determine eye movements, both pursuit and saccadic eye movements, uh, which sounds terribly complicated, but in essence, it's how you move your eyes, why you're drawn to certain things, and how you actually attract your eyes to certain things. And the way to understand them, again, goes back to what I said early, in an earlier part of this video, and that is that the cranial nerve nuclei lie in the brain stem, the midbrain at the top, the pons in the middle, and the medulla. So the midbrain, the middle of the brain, joined by a bridge, pons, pons pontus in Latin, to the medulla, which is the bulb, or the bulbar nuclei are there. So the third and the fourth nuclei are in the midbrain, the fifth runs more or less through the brain stem, sixth and seven will be in the pons, and more or less, crudely enough, the rest of the cranial nerve nuclei are in the bulb or in the medulla. So midbrain pons medulla is the mantra you must understand for the rest of this cranial nerve demonstration. So looking at eye movements, the first thing you must always do when you examine a patient uh, and you're coming towards their eye movements is stand back from, from it a little, if you like. So, Donica, if I could ask you to look straight at uh, the stick here, and I make some general observations. I first of all remind myself, are the pupils equal? Yes. Are the eyes sitting aligned in a normal position? Yes. Is there any evidence of ptosis or drooping of the eyelid? No. And is there any evidence of nystagmus at rest? That, in essence, means jumpiness of the eyes. Is there jumpiness of the eyes at rest? And if it's very subtle, they're called square wave jerks, which are just tiny little uh, bits of nystagmus seen in some cerebellar conditions. So once I've established that everything is fine, the ophthalmologist will talk about doing a cover test if there's seeming inequality. And the cover test is simply to ask the patient to focus on uh, the stick here. And we can see if the alignment of the eyes change when we cover one eye and see if there's any adjustment. Usually this is done, however, in children uh, looking for strabismus or squint. But from the adult neurological perspective, we're looking at eye movements of three, determined by three, four, and six. Now, there are different ways to do eye movements, and I do them a specific way, and I'll show you why. So if you can look at the stick here, I'm going to ask you to look, follow, keep your head still, if you will, will and look to your left. Now, you ask a question of yourself, do I see nystagmus? And the answer, no. And I ask a question of the patient, and of the patient, I say, do you see one or two objects? Mm. And in my head now, I'm running through the anatomy of, of these nerves. So I know that in his left eye, he's using the lateral rectus muscle. It's supplied by the sixth nerve and the nucleus is in the pons, as I said. In his right eye, he's using the, using the medial rectus muscle. It's supplied by the third nerve and the nucleus is in the midbrain. Its importance will come, become apparent in time. So if you're keeping your head still now, I want you to follow this, pursue this, if you will, to the right-hand side. And the same question, do I see nystagmus? No, I do not. Do you see one or two objects? And in his left eye, this time, he's using the medial rectus muscle supplied by the third nerve, the nucleus for which is in the midbrain. And in his right eye, he's using the lateral rectus muscle supplied by the sixth nerve, the nucleus for which is in the palms. Now, most people tend to go into a H-type fashion, but I feel it doesn't lend itself to the understanding of this, so I'm going to be a bit controversial and say, come back into the middle here, turn the stick on its side, and now, keeping your head still, can you look up? Now, the vast majority of pull here are, in both eyes are the superior recti muscles supplied by the third nerve, the nuclei for which are in the midbrain. And this just keeps it clear as to what you're doing during the examination as opposed to randomly doing a H and not really understanding it at all. You have to change position for the inferior recti. So I'm going to, I'm going to move the stick down, uh, Donica, but I'm going to put my hand on your face, always ask permission, and I'm going to hold your eyelids gently open. Do not grab the patient by the eyelids straight away. Now, if you're looking straight down there, do you see one or two? One. And these are the inferior, the main pull is of the inferior recti in both eyes, supplied by the third nerve, the nucleus for which is in the midbrain. Now, for the, for the oblique muscles, you go down into the corners. That's the fourth nerve on the left, fourth nerve on the right, and then the inferior obliques are up and up, and again, both supplied by the third nerve. So, in other words, you, a little bit of a, a change to the normal practice, you go, keep the patient's head still, go from left to right to center, up, down, and then go into the corners. It's understanding the eye movements is the most important thing in the first instance before you can then dissect as to what causes dysfunction of these. Now, once you've done the pursuit movements, which, these, uh, which I've just done, you then look for saccadic eye movements. Our eye movements should be like the windscreen wipers of a car. 
and there should be in complete synchronicity. Now, sometimes what happens is, as you imagine, when the rain dries up a little bit and it makes that annoying noise on your screen, the eyes can start to jump a little bit, and that's when the saccadic eye movements become out of kilter. And that's very important to, do, to test for those. So I, what you do here is you ask the patient to look to the left, keeping your head still. I want you to look to the right now. To the left, to the right, to the left, to the right, to the left, to the right, to the left, to the right. Great. You can do the same in vertical gaze. Can you look up and down and up and down? But it's more, usually more uh, productive, if you like, looking from le on the horizontal gaze, because what you're looking for here is an internuclear ophthalmoplegia. As the name implies, it's ophthalmoplegia, or weakness of an eye muscle, due to a problem between nuclei. And the nuclei involved are the third and the sixth. So the third nerve nucleus and the sixth nerve nucleus are connected by a bundle of fibers called the medial longitudinal fasciculus. If you have a lesion there, it causes dysfunction of saccadic eye movements that's pathognomonic almost of multiple sclerosis, and that's called an internuclear ophthalmoplegia. And for instance, if, heaven for friends, you had an internuclear ophthalmoplegia, Danica, of your left eye, you'd have a left, sorry, sorry, of your left MLF, medial longitudinal fasciculus. When I ask you to look to this side, all will be well, but when I ask you to look here, your medial rectus wouldn't work, so you'd have failure of adduction of the left eye, and you'd get nystagmus in abduction of the right eye, because you're always trying to get the image you're looking at on your fovea together. So if you can imagine, you look out here, this one stops moving, and this one goes, where's, where's the image, where's the image? So it's an INO, very suggestive MS, and tested by doing saccadic eye movements.